What's going on? Brian Tong here, and this is my review for Apple's latest flagship phone, the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And, you know, do they look nearly identical to the 12 Pro? Yeah, they do. And are many of you still calling it the 12S? Well, you are. And ironically, Apple is the one that trained us to call the iPhones under the hood upgrade years as S years. And now that it's stuck with us, we have the four to the 4S that brought Siri, the five to the 5S brought Touch ID. And then in between those other S years, we primarily had camera upgrades. There are improvements that are significant to the 13 Pros. They're gonna make a difference, but it's really up to you to decide if they are important enough to push you to upgrade your current iPhone. Now the 13 Pro, this is no transformer, but there's a whole lot more here than meets the eye. <laughs> And I'm putting the 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max together in this review because they're exactly the same iPhone this year. I've been asking for this for years and Apple has finally listened. The same specs, the same cameras, we got the same features with the only difference being their display sizes of 6.1 inch for this 13 Pro and the larger 6.7 for the Max. And you know, they have a slight weight difference, but no surprise here, look, the design, it's the same, but both 13 Pros are 0.25 millimeters thicker this year, which helps accommodate the bigger battery. And then with this bigger battery, sheesh, like we aren't even completely back to normal, but after using it as my daily driver and then incorporating it into my normal routine, I haven't dropped below 20% battery from morning until downtime on the 13 Pro for four of the six days that I've been using it. Two of those days, I was constantly testing the cameras for this review, so obviously that doesn't count. One day I was at 35%, that is, just pretty damn good. And if battery life matters to you, I think that the ultimate challenge will be if this thing can last a full day at Disneyland. Now, Apple says the 13 Pro will get one and a half hours more juice than the 12 Pro. The 13 Pro Max will get two and a half hours more than the 12 Pro Max, but it's easily the first thing I noticed that made a significant difference. And it was just one of those moments where I just kept saying like, are you serious? This is really good. So. I love the battery life. It's gonna be a big key point here, but let's get through some of the internal specs and aspects of this. We got the new A15 Bionic processor. You got a six core CPU and a five core GPU. The fastest an iPhone has ever been and it should with a big 50% bump in graphics performance. Now I'll tell you, I can't really tell that this phone is really faster in day-to-day -day usage, but what makes it feel faster is that buttery smooth 120 Hertz ProMotion display. It is smooth like butter, but some people will see it and Others won't, I think it's a nice upgrade. We've seen on other phones for two to three years and it's finally on the iPhone. Look, I've used phones with 120 Hertz for a while. So I think that's honestly, why well, I'm just not as impressed that it's on an iPhone. But if this is the reason that you're gonna do it, you're gonna be happy with it. And I don't think it should be the only reason you upgrade because some people they're gonna never notice it's there. And after a week, you might not even really feel it anymore, but the biggest benefit comes to gamers. You get that higher refresh rate for better responsiveness and smoother graphics with mobile gaming, especially when I dominate you all on COD. I'm not doing digital art on an iPhone, but I think the benefits for the accuracy of drawing and seeing every pixel in real time, that's gonna matter. It still has face ID with a notch that's 20% smaller, but my brain did notch notice that it was smaller because it's still a notch. And Lightning, our good old friend Lightning, He's still at the party. I mean, we thought he'd be gone by now, but he's not. And out of all those things, right? Better battery life and the ProMotion display, those are gonna easily be the standouts as the two highlights. But what cosmetically stands out here is the all new camera system that brings an even bigger camera booty bump, which might make you know our iPhone 12 Pro feel a little insecure. I mean, it just dwarfs it, but it's getting three new camera lenses and all new capabilities. Sensor shift image stabilization comes to the entire iPhone 13 lineup, so you get it on the pros, you get it on the non-pros. It was already pretty good, but this is great to have it across all phones. But the camera, the camera is what makes this iPhone 13 Pro different. So we're gonna get into everything it does and then do some comparisons with the iPhone 12 Pro and even the 11 Pro. But we're getting a new 77 millimeter telephoto lens with 3X zoom on both the Pro models. Still not anywhere close to the 10X on other phones. I do wish it was a little better, but slightly improved for the iPhone. I just can't wait for the Periscope stuff coming, hopefully eventually. Now the ultra wide sees the biggest improvement here with autofocus and an F1.8 aperture for better low light performance. And then we got the new wide camera with an F1.5 aperture for even better low light performance as well. So let's just go and see what the results showed. Low light performance, this is probably the capability that I think is gonna affect users the most every day for just taking great photos later in the day at night. And here's an example where, you know, I just wanted to hit the mean streets of Burbank with this wide camera. The most important thing here though is that the iconic Safari and neon sign, its letters are normally yellow 
And the 13 Pro was able to really capture its true color better, also with sharper detail and clarity, while the 12 Pro, it blew the color out and also had larger, kind of that residual halo glow from the sign. Now, if we go and use the ultra wide lens on both phones, the 13 Pro doesn't retain the yellow in the letters as well, but it just does a much better of separating the neon sign. While the 12 Pro does appear to bring in a little more light to see more of the surroundings, but it's still splotchy with the halo effect and it's not as sharp. The 13 Pro really just handles this more cleanly with its autofocus. Now let's go to downtown Burbank. Here's a statue of the Batman statue at night. It is decently lit, but it's also still darker. And here we have the 13 Pro. It did a better job, honestly, of capturing what it actually looked like in real life, where the 12 Pro was able to bring in even more light and did reveal more details if you focus on Batman's chest and the cowl area. I think it's very close, but I would give the 12 Pro just a slight edge here when it comes to just brightening things up. But I think the 13 Pro was really more accurate. Now here's a portrait night mode shot from my backyard and it was significantly darker than what the results were, but you can clearly see just how much cleaner and more natural looking the low light performance of the 13 Pro is. And again, how sharply it handles kind of direct light sources. I'd also say the 11 Pro was the second best in this example. And then you have the 12 Pro coming in third. But finally, just to show you how far the ultra wide low light performance has come. First of all, let's start with a picture of a basketball hoop with the wide lens on all three phones. 13 Pro again, much cleaner. You can see the details of even the telephone wires cleanly while also composing the shot that is bright without being washed out. The 12 Pro and the 11 Pro shots, they are brighter. They actually will reveal more of the photo, but they just aren't as clean and sharp as the 13 Pros. And this is kind of the theme that we've seen from low light performance multiple times here on all these photos. But then if you just really wanna see how far things have come, here's the ultra wide low light performance and you can see how far it's evolved with the 13 Pro just having a sharper image with its autofocus while being a more dynamic shot with clarity. Then you compare it to the 12 Pro that is still brighter, but not nearly as clean. And the 11 Pro, this is a good example of how dark it really was with no night mode at all. So those are just some examples of the new camera's low light performance. And I'd say overall, the 13 Pro camera shows out very well. Again, the 11 Pro and 12 Pro, they bring in more light in multiple instances. I mean, I think they still perform really well, but the 13 Pro, kind of is the best overall performer in low light for wide and ultra wide. And then since we're talking about the ultra wide, we have to talk about the new macro mode that is only on the iPhone 13 Pro models. I think that this is the new feature that will be used the most on the 13 Pros, more than cinematic mode, and then definitely more than ProRes video. Because as you get closer to an object, you'll see here, the iPhone automatically changes lenses to use the ultra wide. You kind of get that little animation that does like a crosses all between the two. Then, you just kind of push, get right up close to the subject, like this blueberry, you can get all the details there on top of it, or even here you get close up and see the details on the seeds of this strawberry. There's just so much you can do here for new types of shots on the iPhone. And we have seen macro on other phones as well, but I think that the change of lens animation, it does make sense for general consumers to just get them to use this feature, not even think about it, make it easy to access macro mode. But then the animation was really jarring for me. There's a specific distance around 14 centimeters where it happens. And you know, these are the iPhone 13 Pros and professionals have never had a professional camera that acts like this, that kind of has that jarring animation between it. So I brought it up and Apple says that a new setting is gonna be added in a software update this fall to turn off automatic camera switching when shooting at close distances for macro photography and video. So I think this is absolutely the right move and some people, might freak out about it when they first see it. Other people won't even notice, but an update is coming. And I also do feel like a little mention on screen when you're in macro mode would also be nice. So here's what the 12 Pro was able to do when you get up close to the blueberry and the strawberry compared to the 13 Pro. So obviously macro mode matters. Macro mode can also be used for video, but you're gonna really need a tripod or just something to hold it steady because it is so up close that your hand is gonna be shaking a little too much for video. I found that to be true, but the feature really that I've been the most excited about for the iPhone 13 is cinematic mode. And this is unlike anything we've seen before. It's available on the entire iPhone 13 lineup and it uses a combination of software-based machine learning and then the information from the wide and ultra wide cameras to kind of help calculate the depth between the subjects. It does not currently use the LiDAR scanner at all to put this together. So you can see, I took this screen capture and I really want to show you how the software is just constantly working, it's recognizing objects and faces as potential focal points, just constantly as you're moving the camera around and it's making these decisions for you. And then after it's captured, you can go back to edit the file and then decide 
when the focus changes and on who. You can even choose the focus to be on a person, uh, on an object. It tend to kind of have trouble staying focused for me on something like this ice cream maker machine. But look, switching between people or even making the decision for you, depending on someone's gaze in real time, I mean, that's just pretty impressive. Damn, you're out of this world. Because, you know, we're at an observatory. Now that's a little cinematic mode mint for you. Yeah, I made that up, mode mint, so don't steal it. Okay, now cinematic mode, this is really groundbreaking. I, you know, it can be very effective in the right setting. I love what it's doing. This is all happening on a freaking phone, people, like in real time. But I also think it's gonna get a lot better over time, especially maybe if they start incorporating the LiDAR sensor in the future because when your hair is against like a brighter background, it just kind of gives you that fuzzy edge effect and it doesn't really play nice with spiky or frizzy hair. So it just tends to work better in lower light like the demo that Apple showed off. These are situations where that can be avoided. Maybe the lighting is better so your the contrast between you and the background is better. But again, it still blows my mind that this can be done on a phone. And I know people, you know, you're gonna use it on social media, you're gonna have some fun clips and filmmakers will also have a completely new tool at their disposal. But I believe that there is a generation of people that will just completely take this tech for granted. I mean, it was the feature that I was the most excited to use and experiment with and really understand, but it's also not something that I would be using every day or every week, not yet at least. And I'd really just like to see what a second generation of cinematic mode looks like. Currently it supports 1080p at 30 frames per second. And I've got to imagine we're gonna eventually get to 4K at 30 frames per second, but it's not really the reason to upgrade to an iPhone 13 or 13 Pro for a majority of people. And as a creator, I'm amazed by it. I'm waiting for it to get even more polished. I do appreciate that Apple is just finally focused on features for a pro audience on the iPhone Pro. And I also know that some of the features that I'm excited about just aren't for everyone, but that's why you know I'm going through them all so you can make the choice for yourself. Look, also another big one for pros, ProRes video is coming to the 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max in an update. That's by the end of the year and that's gonna allow users to record video in a higher quality format for more creative control, for more you know color correction and editing in the post-production process. It's gonna happen on your phone. We'll, we're gonna find out more about it, but I did learn that there's a reason ProRes video is not an option on the 13 Pro, at least level phone with 128 gigs of storage. Now one minute of ProRes video at 1080p and 30 frames per second takes up 1.5 gigs to 1.7 gigs of storage. Now, that's already a good amount, but let's go up another level. One minute of ProRes video at 4K and 30 frames per second takes up six gigs of storage. Now that's a whole bunch and we know the A15 Bionic is doing the encoding and the decoding of ProRes on device, um, but that's still a massive file, you know, I think it's just one of the reasons and obviously one of the considerations why it's not gonna be a feature available on the 128 gig 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max because transferring those large files just would have been a whole lot nicer with USB-C, let's be honest. You put that on the iPhone 13 lineup, it's not as big of a headache, but I think still the most efficient way will likely be lightning to USB-C cable connection to another device or you, know, you could airdrop the files. They still could be massive, it could still take some time. I will pray for you if you wirelessly upload them over 5G because uh, you're gonna be in a world of hurt waiting for some of those files and I just wouldn't recommend that as an option even if it's there. So ProRes, clearly not a feature for everyone. It's not even something for all creators that are gonna be using it, but I do think it's a really nice option that brings a pro level feature to the 13 Pros. Now for the general consumer, the iPhone 13 Pros really come down to significantly better battery life, the new ProMotion display, it's all new camera system with better low light performance and macro mode and a one terabyte storage option. I think there's a lot of, th you know, when you put them all together, that's a lot of stuff. Creatives, you're gonna get more out of cinematic mode. And again, it is special, but I want it to get a little more refined. And then if you're talking about like higher level pros, you're gonna get ProRes video coming soon in an update. But the 13 Pro starts at $999. The 13 Pro Max starts at $1,099 and they are available in 128. 256, 512, and a one terabyte storage option for the first time ever. We know phones have matured so much and it just really comes down to where you're at in the upgrade cycle. If you feel the need to upgrade, there's gonna be always the people that are upgrading every year. I don't, 
I don't really think I'm talking to them in this video, but if you're happy with your phone, whatever phone that is, no one is telling you that you have to upgrade. It's that simple. But if you want an iPhone with an improved battery, the smoother display that you may or may not notice, or you just always wanted to have the best iPhone camera system out today, then the iPhone 13 Pro is gonna be a great get for you. Like I've heard people tell me, Brian, this new iPhone, that's a bad Apple. But is it really? Like, I don't think it's a rad Apple. It's not a groundbreaking phone. So I think that we should just, let's just call it what it is. It's a nice Apple if you're ready to upgrade.